Get ready for some wild and hilarious ride in the second episode of Oshi no Ko. Ruby, the aspiring idol, is all pumped up as she spills her hopes to her middle school buddies about her idol application. She dreams of becoming a superstar like Ai, and she takes us on a roller coaster of her past as Serena and her adventures with Ai as Ruby. But wait, there's drama at home. Aqua, the voice of reason, tells Ruby to buckle up and prepare for those high school entrance exams. But Ruby, being the idol dreamer she is, wants to skip the boring books and focus on her idol stardom instead. Aqua, being the truth bomb dropper, bursts Ruby's bubble and explains the harsh reality of the idol world. He's like, girl, don't get lost in fantasy land. Aqua storms off to meet the director, leaving Ruby wondering what secrets he's hiding. Turns out, Aqua spilled the beans about some agency takeover and how Miyako is now in charge. Bummer, right? But Ruby, being the persistent little firecracker, asks Miyako to form a new idol group. Sadly, Miyako shuts her down, telling her to wait for some magical phone call from another agency. And guess what? That call finally comes. Ruby jumps in excitement, thinking it's her big break. But oh no, it's a rejection. Ouch! Miyako tries to comfort Ruby, but little does she know that Aqua played a sneaky prank. That call was faker than a toupee. Aqua confesses that he doesn't want Ruby following Ai's footsteps and becoming an idol. He's like the evil villain in a soap opera, plotting against our dear Ruby. The next day, Ruby stumbles upon a random dude in the city who scouts her for an underground idol group. Talk about a twist of fate! She rushes back home to spill the news to Aqua and Miyako. Aqua, being the master schemer, hatches a plan to dig up dirt on this shady group called Yilibu. He meets with this woman named Lala who spills the tea on favoritism and unhappy members. Aqua, not wanting Ruby to join this mess, tries to woo Lala into joining Strawberry Productions. But alas, Miyako shuts that down too. No bad-mouthing colleagues allowed in her kingdom. Ruby, oblivious to all this drama, shows off her snazzy new outfit and can't wait to attend Yilibu's concert. Little does she know that Miyako has other plans up her sleeve. She hands Ruby a contract, and boom! She's now an entertainer with Strawberry Productions. Take that, Yilibu. While all this craziness unfolds, Aqua is busy editing videos and dreaming of a life behind the scenes. He's like, no more spotlight for me, thank you very much. He even wants to track down his father, whom he blames for Ai's demise. And guess what? He's planning a DNA test using hair or mucosal samples. Talk about CSI detective work. But here's the kicker. Aqua doubts his own acting skills and feels like he can't compare to Ai. Dude, don't be so hard on yourself. The director even gives him a pep talk, telling him to embrace his acting dreams. Aqua decides to join the general education department instead of performing arts, but he's still determined to find his father. Talk about a man on a mission. In the midst of all this chaos, Aqua and Ruby visit Uto High School, which has this fancy performing arts department. Turns out only certified talent agency peeps can apply. Aqua, being the rebel he is, signs up for the general education department, shocking everyone.